It's a numbers game on Atari Archive with a look at basic math. For as long as people have been mashing up numbers, they've been looking for ways to make the process easier, whether it's mathematical techniques like long division, or using an abacus to keep track of large numbers. Anything that can help reduce human error, we like. And similarly, anything that might make teaching math easier, well, we'll give that a shot too. It's no secret that computers are good at math problems, and the introduction of the pocket calculator in 1971 gave the general public its first real opportunity to find that out firsthand. Suddenly, the idea of using a computer to learn things that traditionally required books, paper and pencil, didn't seem so far-fetched. And so when the first programmable game console started arriving on the market, they all tried to position themselves as being more than just game machines. They could teach your kids math, vocabulary, and even some social studies in a fun, entertaining environment. In practice, this was more advertising bluster than anything. These games were on the market, and they are ostensibly educational, but they aren't all that fun. Atari's first offering in this educational lineup was basic math, or simply math under the Sears line. Developed by Gary Palmer, it is exactly what it sounds like on the label. Basic Math has a few different game modes built around addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The game will present the player with a series of math problems, and they must enter the correct answer. The game will keep track of how many correct and incorrect responses the player puts down and will tally it up after 10 problems. Get it right, and you have a triumphant little rendition of Charge! Get it wrong, and you get a sad little series of tones along with the correct answer. The select switch allows you to switch between what type of subproblems will be presented between the four major types of math. The first four game types allow you to choose what your top number will be, and will then randomly fill in the second number as a variable for you to solve. The latter four game types are random problems that will choose both numbers for you. The right difficulty switch adjusts whether or not you have a timer for each problem. The left switch will indicate how long it'll be in the first four game types. You get 12 seconds or 24 seconds to answer a problem. In the last four game types, the left switch will allow you to choose between two digit problems at 24 second timer or single digit problems with a 12 second timer. And allow me to say that if you haven't done mental math in a long time, the two-digit random numbers will probably roll you. If it's something you're learning or trying to refresh yourself on and you really want to quiz yourself, then basic math can get the job done. Otherwise, it's a little embarrassing to know that you just got stopped by a math game from the 1970s. It won't explain to you how to get the correct answer, but if you manage it, the game will let you know. As noted, practically every early game console was shoveling out these educational games as a selling point to dubious parents, and Atari's 1977 competitors were no exception. The Channel F had a pair of math quiz games, which combined are functionally very similar to Atari's game. The first, released in April 1977, covers addition and subtraction, while the second came along in August with multiplication and division problems. Rather than just using the controller to move from digit to digit, however, the Channel F games use the controller's different types of functionality. Twisting the stick will change either the ones or tens digits, or pushing it left will allow you to do the same for the hundreds or thousands digit. Pushing it right again will send you back to the ones and tens. It's actually kind of confusing in practice, even if you've got a manual to explain to you what to do. The game will at least give you a second chance if you answer wrong, and amusingly, the instruction manuals include a whole list of games that players can play amongst themselves using the video cards. For the Studio 2, there was Math Fun, which was not only the second game in its TV Schoolhouse series, but was also the first of two Studio 3 games to make it to North American markets, even though the Studio 3 itself never did. The game awards points depending on how quickly players answer the question within either a slow or fast count. The game does have a mode that mixes up what kind of math problems you'll get, so it can end up being more challenging than its competitors in that regard. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the Studio 2's funky keypad controls work incredibly well for entering in numbers. Basic Math reviewed somewhat poorly at the time. A 1979 review of the VCS and Video Magazine gave it a 5 out of 10. It isn't all that surprising since this really isn't a game for adults, and it's not all that fun for kids either. Atari did keep it in circulation for a while though. The game was renamed Fun with Numbers in 1980. Even after Warner sold Atari's home division, Atari Corporation kept the game in circulation through 1988, 
when it sold about 6,246 copies. With an 11-year run for basic math, it seems as though having an educational selling point stuck with Atari well into the VCS's golden years. Next time we close out the 1977 lineup with another multiplayer classic.